Let A be a group element with order n. We've now discussed several properties of the order of group elements. I'll leave relevant links in the description. Today, we're going to prove that if A is a group element with order n, then A to the t is equal to the group's identity if and only if that power t is a multiple of the order n. N. So not only is the order of an element the least positive power of the element that gives the identity, but also any multiple of the order will be a power also giving the identity, and those are the only powers that give the identity. That's what we'll be proving. It is, of course, a biconditional statement, so we'll have two implications to prove. We'll begin with the easier direction, showing that any multiple of the order of A will be a power that also gives us the identity. So we begin with an arbitrary multiple of A's order. A's order is n, so we're just saying let t be some multiple of n, say t equals n times q. Then a to the t is equal to a to the nq, since t is equal to nq. By our exponent laws, a to the nq is the same as a to the n, to the power of q. And of course, we took n to be the order of the element a. So a to the n, by definition, is the identity. And so a to the n to the q is the identity to the power of q, which is just the identity. And so we've proven that if we raise a to a power that's a multiple of a's order, then we will get the identity. Now we can move on to the next direction of the proof. Now we will suppose that we have a power of a, a to the t, which equals the identity, and we want to prove that this forces t to be a multiple of a's order. First, we'll apply the division algorithm. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on that if you need a recap. By the division algorithm, we can divide t by the order of a, divide t by n, and get that t is equal to n times some quotient q plus some remainder r, where r is at least 0 and less than n. Again, this is just applying the division algorithm, which allows us to write this arbitrary power t as a multiple of a's order n plus some remainder. Now remember, our goal is to show that a to the t equaling the identity forces t to be a multiple of a's order n. So if we can show that this remainder r is 0, that would mean that t is a multiple of n, because that would mean t is just equal to n times q. Now to do that, we'll begin with some more applications of our exponent properties. We know that the identity e is equal to a to the t. But of course, t is equal to nq plus r, so a to the t is equal to a to the nq plus r. By our exponent laws, that's equal to a to the nq times a to the r, which is equal to a to the n to the power of q times a to the r. Again, n is the order of a, so a to the n is the identity, and so a to the n to the q is the identity to the q. So a to the n to the q times a to the r is the identity to the power of q times a to the r. The identity to the power of q is just the identity, and so this just equals a to the power of the remainder r. So what we see is that a to the power of this remainder is equal to the identity. And the question is, what can we say about the remainder r given that this fact is true? Well, by definition of order, there's no way that a to the r is equal to e for any r between 0 and n, strictly between 0 and n. That's because n, the order of a, by definition, is the smallest positive integer such that a to that integer gives the identity. So if a to the r gives the identity, then r cannot be a positive integer that's smaller than n. That's just by definition of order. However, we know that r is between 0 and n, 
at least zero and less than n, which means the only remaining possibility is that r is equal to zero. It can't be a positive integer less than n, so the only possibility is that it's equal to zero. But that means if t is equal to nq plus r and r is zero, well then t is equal to nq. Let's walk through that one more time. By the division algorithm, we can write this power t as some multiple of n plus a remainder r. By simply applying some exponent properties, we can show that the identity e is equal to a to the power of this remainder r. By the division algorithm, that remainder r is at least zero, but less than n. But by definition of the order of a, the remainder r here cannot possibly be a positive integer that's less than n, and so that forces it to equal zero. And thus we've shown that t is a clean, perfect multiple of the order n, as desired. So if a is a group element with order n, then a to a power t is equal to the group's identity if and only if t is a multiple of n. If t is a multiple of n, then a to the t is the identity, and if a to the t is the identity, then t must be a multiple of a's order n. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you find these abstract algebra videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description. Thank you very much for watching. To pick me up and slowly get to know me. We'll unwrap each other until we're never lonely. Hello. 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 Hello.